On this episode of the Star Wars Time Show, Matt and Nick will be talking about some new SH Figure Arts Star Wars toys. Some awesome fan-created YouTube content. We got an animated series coming at you and a live-action short. We also got a rumor that the uh, Star Wars saga, the Skywalker saga, all of them actually, solos, rogues, you name it, will be getting the 4K treatment in 2020. And finally... Last but not least, we'll be doing that top five from, let's just say, a few days back because Matt's lazy ass took a vacation. Cue the music. everyone welcome back and hot damn is it great to be back that's right the announcer ratted me out my fat ass has been on the beach for the past week and a half but i'm back and it's time to talk star wars right there's always time for star wars time sing it you know you love to sing along there's always time for star wars time there's always time for star wars time there's always time for star wars time that's right matt and matt and nick we're back well i'm matt not mac that's nick not <laughs> I'm Nick. Anyways, people. Yeah, you can tell I'm a little shot out of a cannon. It's been a while since I've opened this gas bag on the airwaves of the SWT. But we're here, and as you heard from the announcer, we got a few things to talk about. I mean, mostly fandom-related, but we got a nice little rumor to dig into. Where I'm sure Nick and I will take it down. All sorts of wishes and wants and this, that, and the other thing for a potential 4K super-duper box set of all things Star Wars live action. But before we get there, Nick... We do have some lighter things to talk about, starting with, you know, kind of my my big thing here, my my collecting hobby, and that is the news that uh, the SH Figure Arts Crate Luke and the Force Awakens Han figures are coming this December. Yeah, yeah, these are some beautiful figures. I am really starting to, like, you know, we do the top five, we're really into the Instagram community, so, like, I'm starting to get into these figures now. Even a little bit, you know, not nearly as much as Matt, but I see these new figures. I'm like, oh, shit, these these look cool. Maybe they could look good on a shelf. I got a bookshelf. I have some cool nerdy Uh-oh. stuff on it. Can I, Uh-oh. you know, will I end up buying a figure maybe for display purposes? It could happen. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> they get my little Palpatine for Oh, yeah. I mean, it's seeing these figures, it definitely, you know, tingles some senses every now and then. Like, oh, shit, this one looks pretty sweet. I mean. Yeah, but that's probably until you look at the price tag. And like, <laughs> hey, well, yeah, I mean, six, these are going to retail for 60 but that's if you live basically in Japan. If you're, if you're coming over here, you're paying at least 80 for these bad boys. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I, I guess we'll start with Han first. But it is is old old man Han based on his appearance from The Force Awakens. Like I said, coming around sixty dollars plus. Uh, they're out there. They're out there for pre orders now. I mean, this is kind of old news. But hey, we didn't get to talk about it. I want to talk about it because I mean, I, I I think this Han is he's pretty rugged looking. I mean, it, it's a great face sculpt for Harrison. Uh, you could argue in, that you can always make this argument, especially if you're a collector. You know that Figure Arts does not get down with soft goods whatsoever. And by that, remember that's the cloth stuff, Nick. So yep. it would have been nice if you had maybe a, a cloth jacket, something like that, to snazz them up. But in terms of the face sculpt, I mean that that's about as dead nuts old man Harrison as it gets. Oh yeah, I mean this looks almost exactly like Harrison Ford, obviously. When you're doing a recreation of a face on a on a you know a one six scale figure here that you can you know see a few little discrepancies but like they get the wrinkles they get the face shape they get the the Harrison Ford look on his like he looks like that you know like Harrison does when he's just like sitting in his house and he makes that grimace and you know that's yeah, he looks just, pissed yeah. I mean he <laughs> looks pissed to be alive essentially yeah he's just he's just old man Harrison and it's it, it looks really good and it's also cool that it comes with like a removable pistol and it comes with the the holster for the pistol as well um, oh they always do that yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're particular with their accessories it's just like I said the the figure arts people do not like cloth accessories at all i mean i I don't i'm trying to think here i don't think there's a single one i own that has just a piece of cloth it's always either rubber or or flexible plastic yeah i mean for the that's kind of a bummer 
for the Han, I can see the the flexible like plastic or the rubber because he does have kind of a leathery jacket. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, a little bit of shine. But yeah. if you like, if you get down, like once we start talking about Crate Luke and he's got the you know his Jedi robe on, that should definitely be like a soft goods, you know, cloak. It, there's no oh, reason for it to 100%. be. But you know, it still looks cool and like. Even in the shots that we have from from figure arts here, you can see the the posability of the figure. They nail. They basically nail the Han Solo pose where he's like aiming the pistol. Um, so yeah, it looks like a like a really good uh, piece here. So so have you already gone out and got the pre orders on these? Well, well, as funny as you were talking him up, I'm sitting here going, man, you dumbass. Did you even pre order these yet, or is this one of those deals where you've probably pre ordered them four or five times because you think you forgot you pre ordered them and then pre order them at this site, that site, and another site? <laughs> I've done this a lot, my friends, and I don't know if any of you other collectors here that get some of these imports. I'll throw down a pre-order on BBTS because that dude usually brings it in, and that's an American store, but he always upcharges. Uh, then I'll throw down sometimes on Nin Nin Game or Ami Ami or Nippon. And it's like, hey, hey, yeah, and then I forget. <laughs> and then I get uh, I get that panic or I get a FOMO when I see someone like, oh, shit. And then I'll go pre-order it at another site because I forgot that I pre-ordered it previously. Uh, so as Nick was talking, I was looking. No, I have not pre-ordered these yet, but I, I definitely will be adding them to the collection. I was actually just checking Ami Ami right now, which is my go-to for Japanese imports. Uh, love them. They always ship their shit, and it's always shipped quickly from Japan. And like I said, you typically are going to spend an extra 20 bucks to get it shipped, but you're not going to be spending the American or the eBay black market markup on these imports. So, uh, yeah, Han, he'll be pre-ordered. Let's, uh, moving on to this, Luke, as you said, the, the rubber robe is, is it's kind of a shame. Yeah. It just... It, it kills it, really. But like I said, they, they've done it. I, I mean, at least they gave him his robe. Most Jedis they make, I mean, outside of Old Man Obi-Wan, and again, I'm just going off the top of my head, trying to peer over into my collectible uh, booth there. But I believe this is only the second Jedi figure arts that has some sort of a robe. They, they've made them all, especially the, the, the prequel era ones, with no robes. So they just come in their tunics. Hmm. Um, but you are getting some a few more accessories with this Luke here. You get a couple heads. I, I'd question the head is a little more Chuck Norris in some of these. I than, was going to say the head sculpt. Than Mark Hamill. Yeah, the <laughs> head sculpt, particularly the one if we're looking at like second row, far right. That is definitely oh, yeah. Chuck Norris's head. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I know yeah. that, you know, in his older age, they've kind of, you know, Mark and, and Chuck kind of look similar, but not that similar. Also, it, it like, the, I don't know if it's just me, but like looking at the quality of the middle head sculpt on the second row, it looks like there's, I don't know if it's just like a bad run that they took a picture of, but it looks like it's got like a lot of like little pores in it that make it look kind of blurry and hard to read. That that honestly is what they look like. You got to remember these things, Nick. His head in real life is probably smaller than a gumball. Oh yes, good point. You know, I mean, these guys again are only about six inches. So I mean, his head you could fit within your fingers, like pinching it. Uh, but no, I mean that, that's the, how the figure arts paint app actually looks. Okay, gotcha. up close. Yeah, like if you, re it's like sometimes you can't do hardcore macro portrait photography with these guys because of what you're saying right there. I mean, you're actually seeing just like you'd see in a, a an old newspaper that actually had comics. You know, on Sunday the colored version of the comics. It's you can actually see the little color dots to to create the green eyes, the blue eyes, whatever. Oh so. wow. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, I get you there. I, I'm still going to get them just because I'm a sucker and I love the figure arts. I mean, they're just, they always look great in hand and they, they pose great. And this one, I, I like the dice. I mean, if anything, I just, yeah. I, I like the little accessory stuff like that because it's always shit that I could, uh, you know, slip into another shot or give to another character uh, when I'm out there fucking around with the old toy photography hobby, which I did do some at the beach. And I'm happy to say, I turned on my soon-to-be eight-year-old nephew onto the hobby. I mean, he went out with me on Thursday of, of the week I was out, and we were probably out for two and a half, three hours, and he was just having fun setting him up, saying, all right, that's the scene, let's shoot it. <laughs> he was spraying the atmosphere aerosol for me, so that was, that was a good time. That's but, awesome. That's awesome. Did yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to spread, spread the hobby to younger generations. Uh, he has a little brother, too, that's 
five, and and he, even he was getting into it. And I actually think I may, <laughs> I may share some of their shots on Haywood Pop. Nice, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's pretty awesome. There, you could even that, tell them like, hey, if you have an iPhone, go out there, right. take some pictures with that thing. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, their their mom will show them, but it, it was fun. I mean, it was nice, and and she enjoyed that. My sister liked it. it kind of got the boys away from her, <laughs> took them out for the day, and and had them out there not playing on the Switch and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, so uh, to wrap this one up, you got Figure Arts, uh, TLJ Luke, Crate Style, and TFA Han, Old Man Harrison Style, coming out this December. Pre-orders are out there on your um, typical Japanese sites. I have not checked Big Big Bad Toy Store, but I'm sure they have it up there, too. So, moving on, uh, like I teased in the intro here, or the announcer. Again, that's not me. That's someone we pay to do that. Yeah. Um, there, there, some good fan created stuff has been coming out over the past few weeks or and really just in 2019 i mean nick and i we shared that fixing it in post remake of scene 38 from a new hope i actually put out a vfx breakdown video today on starwarstime.net if you want to check that out if you're into how people make something like that scene you know how they impose alec guinness's face over the, the stuntman this that and the other thing but anyways, Nick, you know, I, I'm kind of into this shit. I, I like when fans get creative. So one of these new series, and this is from someone that most of you probably know about if you're a Star Wars fan or you're in the fandom in general, and that is the Star Wars Theory Channel. And what he has done, he's teamed up with someone we've actually shared on this site multiple times. We've actually talked about on the cast multiple times, and that is Eli Hyder, a.k.a. Venomous on Instagram. That's actually how they have his credits in this new series, but they, they created Nick, this animated uh, kind of parody series called once upon a theory. And they released the first episode. I think it was August 4th. I put it out there. And I actually thought it was, it was pretty good. I mean, I liked the animation. Uh, I thought the writing was pretty good. The voice acting wasn't that bad. Uh, so I'm kind of digging these things. Yeah, it was super fun. And it, it kind of, you know, it gives you the alternative, of what could have happened in Star Wars. Now, obviously, like Matt said, it's a parody. They're not actually treating this as like, let's see what would have happened in the entire series if it played out. You know, if Dooku told Anakin about Palpatine like this video does. So you get the comedic factor of it. You get the awesome animation factor of it, like Matt said. But you also get to see like, you know, these proposed theories, these other you know, possible universes, Star Wars universes that are out there. And this one was pretty cool because that's exactly what they go after is like, you know, when Anakin has Dooku on the ground in the ship on the, on the separatist ship about to cut his head off. This video basically shows you what would have happened if Dooku said like, wait, Palpatine is the Sith Lord. He is the one that's orchestrating this whole thing. So and and I have proof. And in the video, he brings out a, like a little hollow disc, and he shows Anakin a picture or you know a video showing Palpatine in the role of Darth Sidious talking to Dooku. So I thought it was a really fun. Yeah, way it's to um. I, I mean, it depends on how much internet you people consume. But if you're someone like me, I, I've consumed a lot over the years through Entertainment Buddha. I've found a lot of kind of what I call web gem uh, honey pots out there. And one of my favorite YouTube channels that that does something similar to this is called how it should have ended and they do animated parodies of, of film plot points and endings and, and how they would have changed it. And that, that's kind of what this is. So as Nick was saying, it, it's the whole throne room scene on Grievous's ship at the beginning of rots and Dooku kind of rats out, um, Sidious, but things still don't quite end well for the good guys. So we'll, we'll leave that, uh, the, the ending for you, but uh, go check it out. We'll be posting them on star Wars time.net, but if you're already a fan of star Wars theory, I'm sure you're in the loop. So I just, I, you know, that's why we exist. And right, Nick, we're, we're here because there's always time for star Wars time, which means sharing rumors, news, speculations, as well as just the fandom. Yeah. And that's, that's probably our favorite aspect of what we do. So check out once upon a theory, from Star Wars Theory. You can get it from us on StarWarsTime.net or YouTube. All right, man. Uh, We're kind of sticking on with the fan-made stuff. And this one, to me, was kind of uh, VFX-wise, production level-wise, on the same level as what Star Wars Theory is doing with his Vader films, 
as well as the Fixing It in Post uh, Scene 38 remake. And, and this one was called Force of Darkness. It is from Seize the Frame. And these dudes and dudettes, man, I don't know if you watch this, Nick, and I, I, I wouldn't say the entire short is just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. But the quality is unbelievable for YouTube. Oh, yeah. this And the the end, like what happens there between Kylo and Vader, that's pretty fucking boss. Yeah, I mean, I almost want to talk about this as like a possible, like a possibility of something we could see within within yeah it's it's the rise of I'll, I'll let you i'll let you talk it up but i i guess to me uh, the first time i saw it it's almost akin to luke's dagobah force cave encounter exactly so the something like that the, yeah the what we're seeing here basically is a is a proposed kylo ran versus darth vader fight and like matt said this looks so good for a youtube video that it looks like it could have come straight from the film i mean all of the special effects in this the lightsabers, the voices, the costumes of the people who are who are acting in this short are spot on. And, you know, the only thing where you suffer a little bit is it doesn't seem like the people who are in this are like actual um, they're not sword fighters. So the fighting, you know, the, the lightsaber battle between the two of them, it is short, but it doesn't look like you could tell it's like labored and they're kind of just swinging the, the sabers around. Yeah, it's I mean, we've said this before, though. I mean, you can kind of get away with the lumbering fights with Vader yeah. because he is just kind of a Hulk. I mean, he lost all of his acrobatics, all that shit when he got his ass kicked on Mustafar. Uh, but yeah, you would expect a little more uh, nimbleness from Kylo. But uh, yeah, they're, they're doing like the Sith heavy battle. And, and you are right. That is the, the thing that kind of, when you're watching it play out until it gets to the awesome climax, you're going like, hey, this this looks fucking amazing. But you probably could have used a little stunt guy help in here. But hey, hey, we're not shitting on this. I mean, this this stuff is way more impressive than what our two dumbasses do at a computer oh, yeah. talking about Star Wars. It's just... You know, hey, you push it out there, you're, you're going to get a critique. It's just, I, I mean, it's top-notch production with a, a, a pretty good little scene story, like like a good little short from start to finish. Yeah, and what I really enjoyed about this is that it seems like the, the guys that seized the frame knew that they were going to be a little bit lacking in the lightsaber action part of this, but what they did was they really used the force in a way that, yeah. that compared these two characters perfectly. So, you know, it's a it's about a seven minute long video from the start until when the credits start rolling. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think, yeah, I was going to say that the credits probably eat up two, two and, and a half, half minutes. Yeah. So the actual short might be four and a half. It's still well worth your time, even with us sitting there saying that the fighting's not as dynamic as you may expect. But uh, like I said, for the characters... It works, and as Nick said, he nailed it. I mean, it really is the, the, the force games that they play. And what I said at the, the, the top of this segment is the end is great. Yeah, exactly. It's, just, it, it's great. I mean, it, it is like vintage Sith on Sith, master getting cocky. Love it. Yeah, I mean, I almost want to – like, do you think that we could see something like this in Rise of Skywalker? I mean – if we look well, at, I mean, dude, at, at, based on what we're hearing, at this point, I think it's a it's a gimme that there's going to be some form of, of Vader slash Anakin in this movie. Yeah, and I think um, this is the we're going to be talking about probably on our on part two of this mega cast, which by we didn't tee. This is a mega ca <laughs> mega cast. It's really we're just lazy, don't want to talk for two plus hours, but. Uh, you know, kind of based on what we're hearing about the score and that every theme you've ever heard is going to be in here. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, fuck, Darth Maul could pop up at this point. Yeah. I mean, you see Dooku floating around. I mean, it, it sounds like the way people are explaining Nine, it's just like the fucking end-all, be-all to everything. Here we go, cram it in, hopefully it works. Yeah, this is going to be throw everything you got at it, take up as much time as you can, eat up as much, you know, Star Wars lore as you can and just make sure that you blow it out for the last one and then hopefully after rise of skywalker you basically get a reset button so you hit the reset button and then we come back with you know 
Weiss and Benioff's new trilogy or series Shit, of films. Man, don't get me started on that three year wait. I know. It just makes me want to stick a pencil up my nose. I fucking hate. I mean, it just it, it makes me ill. But you are right. I mean, it is going to be a full-on reboot. I mean, it could be too long of a reboot, or it could still be people going, hey, where the fuck are the Skywalkers, assholes? Fuck you, Disney. Suck a dick. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a pretty solid restart, and and you have to know right away that, like, okay, this is no longer Skywalker time. This is no longer the, the, the period of time where... I'm, I'm with you, man, but I, I still think just the way people reacted to Jedi and the changes and really anything that's not Skywalker-centric, that they better have either the best trailer ever if it's all brand new characters, or they better, as we've talked in the past, they better be leaning on somebody from the now legends that are coming back in the canon, like a, like a Revan, like a Malik. I mean, they're, they're, I feel like they're going to need... A character or a, a time period with characters we know about to really get people jazzed outside of the nuts like us. I think that I mean yeah. we're we're an easy sell. We we're we're the ones gonna be sitting here with thumbs up our asses, whining like fanboys, like oh, why can't we see a Star Wars movie in twenty twenty? You know? Yeah. It, it, what, <laughs> but what's gonna get the other people out there? The, the the haters or the ones that just wait and see what everyone else is gonna do? I don't know. I mean. I'm all about the reboot. I'm all about no Skywalker, but it's got to be. You're going to need somebody to get people into a theater. A shitload of red lightsabers. I'm sticking with it. I don't. I like. I love the Skywalker saga for what it is, and the Skywalker saga is what enabled things like this Force of Darkness video to be made, where you have this incredible clash between two villainous characters, and you get to see how they would interact with each other, even though they are part of different, you know, essentially different periods of time within the saga. Obviously, Darth Vader is dead by the time that Kylo Ren's alive. So, you know something's going on with this video. But but I think that once you get outside the Skywalker saga, you have to make it to where this rule of two shit is over. Like, there's no two Jedi. There's no two Sith. Like, all of that goes away. You have to make it yeah, I mean, we, we've explored that in basically films one through nine. Yeah, like so. So if you're if we're just going to come back and we're going to rehash the same thing with with different characters and a different, you know, with different planetary names and stuff like that, I think you're going to have a hard time getting a new group of people or getting the same Star Wars fans to essentially go see, you know, the same kind of story being told. You need something brand new. And that's what these guys are, are known for. That's what Weiss and Benioff are kind of good for doing is they take something like Game of Thrones and then they turn it into absolute spectacle where people who had never heard of Game of Thrones probably would never read Game of Thrones in their entire life. All of a sudden, no, no, you're, you're right. I, I hope it. they just have a writer with them, even though they're writers. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm super interested to see where where, you know, we go after the rise of Skywalker, but I'm also really keen to see if something like this, like the force of darkness could pop up in rise of Skywalker. Cause Kylo Ren, there's still a lot to be discovered about this character. There's still a lot to be wrapped up about this character. And I think that Vader, we need Vader. We need Anakin to be able to really put this character to bed at the end of this movie. I saw some dumb shit. Not, we're not going to get into it cause <laughs> I don't have the details, but there's 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 something going around now asking the question, did Vader really help Luke or was he helping Palpatine? What? Like do you what? think oh that's like what I said in him at that's the what, end. Okay. Right, but that's what I said initially too, but if you think about it they could probably get away with it. Yeah. And re and revise history a bit. You could. You could. You could definitely you know, because, I mean, look, look, the roots that have been pl- planted for Palpatine post death canon Operation Cinder in particular, the guy clearly would have been playing this longer than just Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, you never know. I mean, you know how Sith operate. Uh, maybe he did hide it from Vader, but maybe Vader was in it. And part of the deal was like, no, you got to do this. I'm gonna, when you do this, I'm going to pass my spirit into your helmet, and one day your grandson's going to dig it up, and that's how we get this party started. I mean, that's very Who possible. Knows? I mean, he could... Yeah, but... 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea. Maybe Palpatine could have seen, like, hey, the the Empire as it is now is definitely not falling apart. This rebellion's picking up more steam than I thought. And this Skywalker kid is is legitimately a threat. So it's probably better. Well, I, you could also now. think of, like, hey, I've seen the future. I know Skywalker can't handle the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Like let's let's let him be the hero, the legend. Let him get built up, and then that that's going to be his downfall. And sure enough, it was. Let him get torn back. I mean, him. Luke failed so bad in his mind that he he quit. Yeah, he did. He like literally. You, you could argue that the the, pemp, uh, the pemperer. I like that pemperer. <laughs> pemperer Alpatine. Uh, I mean, the, the, the guy he he could see in the future. I mean, he he saw what was going to happen at the the Battle of Endor. This, that, and the other thing. I mean. You could argue maybe it was all big game that he didn't see the turn of Vader. I mean, it was all planned. I don't know. I mean, it's probably not going to go that way. But it, like I said, the first time I saw it, I was like, what the fuck? And then when I thought about it, I was like, yeah. Hey. For where they're going with the return of Palpatine, I mean, shit, anything is possible, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's fair game because he's he's clearly the key villain through this whole nine series of films like he's no, he's the guy that's what they're they're selling us now nick that's what they're <laughs> selling us now i don't think anyone saw it coming that's why that uh, first teaser for tross was so amazing i mean it was amazing just because we knew it'd be in the opening shot really what set the stage but the whole cackle at the end i mean n- no one saw that no yeah no one saw that so uh, yeah so. I, I, i'm pumped i'm pumped because there's a lot to be Seen, there's a lot to be heard and a lot to be wrapped up in, in Rise of Skywalker. So, um, right. So there's your for tangents for you, people. <laughs> we said it would happen. It's gone down. That that was two on one. But just to kind of wrap this one up, don't forget to check out support your fellow Star Wars fans creating content like Nick and I. You know, you got to support other fans that create content. That's why we do what we do with the Instagram Star Wars artist crowd, and that's why we share this stuff on StarWarsTime.net. So Seize the Frame is a YouTube channel. They're the ones behind Force of Darkness. Check it out on StarWarsTime.net. Why don't you? All right, moving on to a rumor post that we have for you here, and, and this is kind of a fun one, but one that I almost want to roll my eyes at, and, and that's the fact that Disney has a 4K Star Wars saga, not just Skywalker saga, Star Wars saga box set slated for 2020, Nick. Yeah, so this is this is a very interesting thing because, you know, obviously we've already, you know, we, we figured we were going to get 4K remasters. 4K is the new resolution. Everybody's getting it. Everybody who already has it loves it. But we were just kind of wondering, like, okay, when's the 4K Star Wars going to come out? We know we already have Solo 4K. We already have TLJ 4K. So when are we getting the rest of them? It looks like we're going to be getting the rest of them around 2020. But the rumor is not that we're getting them. The rumor is that the OT versions of the 4K will be the theatrical releases, not the special editions from 1996 forward. So, so that, that's part of the rumor? I missed that part. Yeah, so that's that's the big thing is that you're not going to be getting special edition OT. You're going to be getting original theatrical run OT. No fucking do-backs in the middle of most Eisley Cantina. Do you think... <laughs> no, nah, hey, man, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm doing cartwheels here. I could if my tummy wasn't so big. I ate a lot of pizza and drank a lot of beer. Anyways, do, do you think they do it kind of like what they did... I think it was with the first ever DVDs where they released the original cut and the special edition same disc. I mean, do you, do you say, so for New Hope, do we get a New Hope OG 4K, a New Hope special edition 4K? I think that they'll probably give you both. Yeah, I think they will. Hmm. I wonder if they would split it into separate well, I mean, you've got to argue we're, we're, since we're like these – new more progressive star wars fans and we don't want to yell at people too much <laughs> there's 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 got to be a subset of humans out there probably the prequel crowd that prefer special editions are their editions yeah i mean there's a lot of people out there who legitimately haven't seen the original trilogy the yeah, and I, i'm not going to sit there and, and say that yeah special editions are the way to go i mean the, the only special edition that's even somewhat not a fuck up 
is Empire. Yeah, because they don't change. They, that they much really didn't do. They didn't do shit. I mean, they added a few new cuts at, at Bespin. That's about it. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think you might be onto something. I think. What would be cool? Here's so. Here's what I would do if the, even if this is possible. If you had the ability to toggle on and toggle off the oh live yeah yeah like a live yeah i like that so like if you're no, that's getting yeah that's getting future forward nick yeah i don't know if you could do that yet and i know that there have been like additional well hey man if they in. can fucking do it with a video game because they they've done it with the halo like you remember what 343 did with halo one and two yeah where they did the like the act the super duper remasters yep. literally in game you could go go ghetto go new yeah so I, <laughs> if you can do it with the fucking game engine, come on. Yeah, you, you can you figure sh- that out on a fucking Blu-ray. I mean, it's just some simple programming. Probably just read the next stream. Yeah. So I think that that would be the coolest way to do it. Is that you know you're watching the the you know original trilogy, and then you like you say like, oh, I want to see you know what's going on here before the special editions in 1996 come up, and it just switches over, and then you can switch back or whatever. Or like if you, you know, maybe just it would probably be easier if right up front you you hit play and it asks you to choose. Like, do you want to watch theatrical release? Do you want to watch yeah. original or special edition? Yeah, I'm not talking about getting separate discs for everything. I mean, shit, at this point, compression's gotten so well now that even 4Ks, you can get way more content on them than even the first 4Ks were getting, so... I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'd imagine there's a lot of work to restore the originals to 4K because they haven't been touched. I mean, they have not been touched since, like I said, that DVD release. And, and those are very rough ass cuts. I mean, I've I've burned everything on the Plex. I got Plex. I got all my movies in there. And every once in a while, I have both of the Star Wars, as we're talking right now, I have specials and the OGs. And the OGs are rough. <laughs> I mean, like 480p little squares on a widescreen TV, zero up res. I mean, zero remastering of the audio so far. Uh, they'd have to do a lot of fucking work. And let's be real. The, the original movies, even in 4K, are not going to look any different than they do in Blu-ray. Oh, no. I mean, you, you, I, I just... I can't get behind... I mean... Am I sitting here saying, I'm not going to buy Star Wars for the 20th time? No, I will. But you know as well as I do that old shit, like from the 70s and 80s, I don't care how many Ks it's got, it still looks like it was made in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, I mean, there's you, you can't change what films looked like back no, then. It's just not, like no. you're not going to be able to watch, you know, Return of the Jedi and... It, and have it look you like don't TFA. want that level of clarity, man. <laughs> no. I mean, literally, some of the fucking props and costumes they were using, you and I could make now for yeah. ten. Like bucks. you would see like noses glued on people, and you would see like fucking yes. the, the, the makeup lines and shit like that. It would look terrible. So, but like uh, according to the you know where this came from, this came from Digital Fix. According to them, they've already done the 4K remaster of the OT but they're getting caught up on the prequels. Apparently the prequels for some reason are harder than they anticipated. So like, oh, well, that, that's odd. Cause I, I thought, I mean, okay, let me, let me put it this way. I think the prequels will benefit more than any of the older movies. Yeah. I think that in terms of getting a 4k pass, I mean, th- they will pop because they are all digital. Yep. They are more modern. Uh, they will pop. I mean, isn't TLJ supposedly want to be 4K? Yeah, T- TLJ's 4K and Solo both already have UHD 4K releases. Yeah, TFA doesn't. So basically, they had to do TFA back, and that's so they've done TFA, they've done OT, and they're going back and they're doing prequel. And apparently, prequels are weird. I don't know if it was you know, the way that they were filmed back then, or if it was just the up res. Cause they, I could see that. I mean, it, 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 yeah, remember it was all brand new technology. True. I mean, I believe George and ILM and the homeboys, they essentially invented digital filmmaking, digital filming at that <laughs> yeah. point and how you do it. I mean, they didn't invent the cameras. I'm sure they made the cameras better working with the manufacturers. That's just what those guys did. That's why George is a fucking legend. That's why even with the prequels, I'm not going to sit here and disparage the man. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the guy has done more for, filmmaking than than probably any of his contemporaries yeah 
in terms of just the art of filmmaking. I'm not talking about laying down stories, but you'd also make that argument. I mean, the Star Wars is our Iliad and the Odyssey. It is. It's going to live on for for well. At this point, the way we're going, maybe a hundred more years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as but, but Disney wants point. to keep pumping these motherfuckers out, it'll stay alive. Well, I know I'm just saying, like humanity in general. I don't think oh, we yeah. have many more centuries left yeah. <laughs> at, at the current rate. So. True. It, it would be. I I, mean, I forget what movie it was. Like some dumbass dragon movie set in the future, or some shit like that. I think uh, McConaughey and Bale are in it, but oh, they're, they're actually watching people reenact <laughs> Rain of Fire. Star Wars. <laughs> Rain of Fire. Yeah, there you go. So you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. They, they, they did a reenactment of Star Wars like we reenact Shakespeare shit. Yeah, I mean, that's probably. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, George Lucas, for all his failings narratively with the prequels, is a. He's modern day Shakespeare. What can I say? I mean, the guy has created something that's going to live on well past himself and us. Oh, yeah. Not Star Wars time because there's always time for Star Wars time. Um, all right. Yeah. So cool. I, I mean, I hope this happens. And, and as you said in, in the article, if they do get this together by uh, the holiday season, that'd be great. But it sounds like this is probably going to be pushed into what, 2020? Yeah, they're, they're definitely looking to do this release. So. What's not in this article is that they are there's going to be an announcement at D23 for a a new box set, a 10 movie box set that's going to come out that includes all of the standalones and all of the movies up to this point um, for blue. That's fucking stupid. DVD Blu-ray, not 4K. So you're going to get everything up to and including solo. But why would you buy that? Yeah, but that, yeah, but then you have to go. What they're going to sell one offs of the trust bullshit that's what i, I was mean, gonna this say. is like, where you just so like what what's likely gonna happen is they'll release that and then people will buy it because they're idiots but then they're gonna do a solo release of tross and then probably three months after tross hits shelves for the for the home release they'll do you get this thing. the mega master 4k everything bundle all right i, I w- i'm gonna wait for this and i've actually i've sworn off buying dit i mean no more, and, and I urge all of you to to stop. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I see a lot of you on Instagram. You're still caught up on your steel books, this, that, and the other thing. It's not fucking worth it. It's not worth it. Get get the streaming. You get it earlier. You get it quicker. That's the same thing as earlier. But you don't have all the clutter in your house. Your man cave, you can get rid of all those damn boxes. And it's just, it's everywhere. It's on your Roku. It's on your Apple TV. It's on your phone. It's on your iPads. I cannot stress enough Look. of how much less cluttered my life is without buying Blu-rays. And, and the fact, like I said earlier, to me, it's the fact that you can now get the streaming-only version sometimes close to three weeks before the disc version comes out. So oh, yeah. It, I'm all about it. Get off the disc train, people. But as I say this, if this thing is real, what Nick is talking about, this rumored 4K mega super-duper Star Wars saga box set, I will, I will get that. Because the, the the collectible, the collector in me still for for Star Wars still fucks me up. Yeah, I mean. But everything else streaming only. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. It's probably gonna cost two hundred and fifty dollars. But you know what? That's what we do as Star Wars fans. <laughs> right. And this will legitimately be what? Probably your fifth or sixth version oh, of some of the movies. I, I can't. I don't even want to think about it. Because I remember I got the 1996 special editions. I had yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> by uh, then you're you're still talking VHS. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> uh, we had VHS versions of the originals, oh, yeah. the specials, and then DVD comes around. We do that, and then Blu-ray. We do that, and now oh look, they're making new cases. We do that, and now Nick's talking about we're gonna do this and that, and now we got the 4K. It's done. Yeah, I mean, I, I will probably if this does do digital release, I'm probably gonna lean that way. My Voodoo library has grown significantly recently. Oh, dude, I love Voodoo. Uh, voodoo <laughs> and it, really, what changed everything was fucking movies anywhere. Yeah, that's what did it for me. Once that service came up, I don't even know how they cut the deals with all these other streamers, but they're basically like, hey, yeah, if people just register with us. We'll, we'll, if you buy something on Vudu, it's, it's pretty much going to show up in your iTunes or your Fandango or your Amazon. It's just like at that point, how could you 
not say streaming only because I, I get it before when they're all kind of siloed off you know you had some ultraviolet here but then you can only have your itunes there and this and that yeah it's kind of a pain but now uh, as i said you know all right fire up your roku you bought a movie on itunes guess what you'll watch it on voodoo oh you're you got your apple tv you bought something on voodoo don't worry you can watch it on itunes and it's all there as nick said and it looks glorious i know you guys like looking at your spines or your steel books how about looking at beautiful poster art of all your movies digitally yeah right Come on, it's too, buy in. It's too good. It's too good. So get ready for it, people. If you want to get this September release that's probably going to be announced at D23, go for that one. But just know that there will more than likely be a 4K special edition mega mega bundle in 2020. It, it has to. I mean, come on. Let, let, let's be real. I mean, there is such a thing as greed, and anyone that owns the Star Wars license is greedy. Yeah. All right. And they'd be stupid not to. They'd be stupid not to. Yeah, I mean, they, they want as many billions as they can get from Star Wars. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, it's capitalism, people. It's this, this free market everyone wants. Let's do it. I mean, do it. All right, dude. So moving on to the last segment of the night. And it's the best segment of the night. And it's just the first part of our praise and adulation for the star wars nation out there on instagram that's cranking out star wars art on a daily basis in action figure and traditional art form so you know again i was out on the break nick was doing his top fives i was still curating the page and throwing them up there like a madman so we're we're gonna do two-parter we're gonna do the first top five tonight which is going to account for the week of 726 to 82 and then on the next cast, which will be to you guys, I think grand old number 60, will cover last week's top five. So without further ado, Nick, I lined them up. You knocked them down. Who we got this week? Yes. So from 726 to 82, the first one up on the docket is a beautiful Fulcrum Ahsoka shot by Ad Toys at ad.toys on Instagram. And here's one thing we we rarely get to see Ahsoka Tano shots to start with. I mean, Ahsoka is one of those characters that really doesn't permeate the, the toy photography community nearly as much as she should. I don't know if it's due to lack of figures. I don't know if it's due to, well, this is the only one we got in the black series line. I I think it's For this version of Ahsoka, I mean, she pairs well with the Rebels, but you can't really use her with Anakin or or Obi-Wan, shit like that. You know what I mean? So uh, she also came out. She still looks good. I mean, trust me, up close and personal. I mean, she looks fantastic in AD Toys shot here, but up close and personal, she's an older model so she her face isn't quite sporting that new face digital face shit that they they have on their figures now but anyways who cares the shot looks the shot looks brilliant oh, yeah. and what i like here this is something i roll with that ad's doing here i mean this to me is legit smoke like smoke bomb smoke this is an atmosphere aerosol which by the way i've started using it is as fucking great <laughs> as the rest of you people talk about there you have it sign me up atmosphere aerosol get me another thousand followers thank you but it, you, I can tell that, Nick, because look how nice and thick it is and yeah. ripply it gets. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see the smoke tendrils, and like especially at the top right of the frame. You can see like this like this really detailed just smoke wisp coming in, and it does. It, it, there's a depth to it. I mean, atmosphere aerosol definitely adds depth, and it adds atmosphere to your shots. But like real smoke like this looks like, oh, yeah. you know. They are fundamentally different I, and i've started to realize that i mean smoke is fucking smoke atmosphere aerosol truly is a it's a haze i mean you're, you're going more for a haze or if you can capture some light beams you'll get that where the smoke as we're seeing here from ad gives you that effect and in this case a a battlefield effect and i i like her pose i like the way she's holding her blades the one behind her kind of backwards the way she did and i even like the dead guys i mean i like that we got a an at at commander there (laughs) kind of sucking on a a a steel beam beam. i mean it's even a a good looking dio here and we got a a weathered stormy sitting there so yeah just all around great shot great visual um practical effects posing it's probably why ad made the cut right oh yeah it's beautiful beautiful we do what we do at ad toys well done, sir. Follow him on Instagram. Next up 
is I talked about this shot, I think, on the last cast that we had. Maybe I'm, I, I may have mentioned it, but this, uh, this shot here from Rain Heaven Toys, R-E-I-N Heaven Toys, all one word on Instagram, is fantastic. I mean, like, it doesn't even look like a toy photography picture. This looks like... No. It looks like it was pulled straight from, like, maybe... You know, you would see this in Battlefront 2 where people take these, you know, NVIDIA Ansel images or right. straight from like one of the brand new movies. This looks like an actual high resolution shot from a moving picture, whether it be game or movie. And the way that that Rain made this is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, so this is a this is a digi like a, a composite shot because he uses like he digitally imposes the the entire um what you call it? the entire you know sphere the only thing real in this shot is the which, which is a shot of the falcon is the falcon yeah and the way that it looks like it looks like the guy may have held the falcon with his hand yeah. and then just against like a white background yeah. and then he cuts it out and composite it into this uh, other landscape background it looks like he gets from pixabay which is just a free site you can go and get uh, royalty free backgrounds. They uh, dropped a, a Death Star in there. It's it's like I said. I mean, this dude has a strong composite game. I mean, he's doing stuff. Uh, those of you that you've been in this for a while, you've probably heard of Mint Complete. I mean, Mint Complete is another one that's doing some nasty composite work. Black Series can do some nasty composite work. Uh, Plastic Action just did a sick ass shot at SDCC with a godzilla composite right over top the convention center this is when i look at this shit i almost start it, it kind of makes my brain hurt because i know the effort that goes into the digital editing oh. aspect of these types of composited shots oh yeah and uh, i, I th th these are art pieces this isn't just me taking my my short fat ass out to my yard staging some figures lighting off a firework and taking a picture and hoping it looks all right this is all right, I'm going to take this object and then just kind of digitally make it look like it was on this planet. Yeah, I mean, this guy, so this is, his name's Reinhard, and his he just started his toy account, so he's got 13 posts on his toy account, 345 followers, so I expect a lot of you people listening now to go follow this guy, Rain Heaven Toys, but he's also, you know, got his own, like, sports photography and traditional photography Instagram as well, so it's really cool to see somebody kind of take take their passion and take their their right. photography the guy clearly yeah. knows photography inside and out and he knows not only how to use the camera and capture shots but also how to take those captured shots and make them literally in this case look out of this world so fantastic stuff there keep it up i, I know he tags us all the time we kind of discovered him and, and shot him out there to the other star wars toy fans so i'm glad we got to do that for ryan yeah all right, moving on here. Moving on. So this one was, I think that Matt straight up told me I had to put this. Oh, in. I, I lobbied for this one, and and this is from good old Trevor One Six Shooters, no doubt about this. I I, I definitely kind of whispered in, in Nick's Nick's ears, might have used my two fingers a little bit, give him a little <laughs> Jedi mind trick. Oh right, yeah, go ahead. I mean, so this is a so this shot came out right when the Sith Trooper Black Series figure came out, and this is even this is the actual. Hot toys. So this, one. Is and, okay, and, so this is the hot toys. Yeah. So this is the for for Nick's sake. Whenever we talk about the different scales, these are the Barbies, Nick. These are the other ones are the are the six inch. Yeah. So this is about a foot tall, probably. Okay. So that is that's, all of these are. That that's what makes the shot even more impressive to think how big all this shit is. Yeah. So that's a good set up a, a good piece of context to have because what we have here is we have the hot toys. Uh, Sith Trooper in the foreground looking at and the what's really magical about this shot is the way that it is composed by Trevor so it's it's inside of the sunken Death Star you can look in the yes. background and you can see that Trevor made this shot look like it's underwater you have moss growing on the inside of yeah, it's the like structure. seaweed shit kelp whatever yeah and then in the background you also have Kylo Ren who's looking forward at the Sith Trooper, who's the primary focus, and the Sith Trooper is talking to or is communicating with 
Palpatine on it's not, the He just says, like, the, the, the caption says, Supreme Leader, we seem to have found something. So what, what Trevor is going here, I love it. I mean, he kind of took the the announcement of the Sith Trooper, thinking because it looked First Order, they yeah. may be working with Kylo. We, we now know that that may not be the case, which almost makes this shot even more cool. Yeah. Is because... You know, Trevor kind of ran, he did his own speculation like Nick and I do, but he did it in toy photography fucking form. I mean, he painted a way better picture than our dumb asses could ever expel out of our pie holes, right? I mean, and th- this is exactly what I would have thought. Knowing what we know, knowing that the Death Star is underwater, seeing the concept art of, of Ray and them going underwater to the throne room, uh, knowing that Kylo probably is searching for something that could be tied to Palpatine. I think the only thing that is could be off in this now, just because we learned a little bit more, or MSW kind of put the stuff out there, and on was at Cast 58, Nick and I talked in depth. These Sith troopers more than likely are part of this mysterious Sith fleet that may be out there, and they may not be so friendly with Kylo. But who knows? Either way, maybe Trevor fucking knows something because to me that this looks like it's from a movie. Oh yeah. I mean, it, even if you flip it, if you flip it the way where, you know, the Sith are working with Palpatine, then maybe you could say in this shot, like Kylo sneaking in from behind and is going to get ready to cut this dude's head or, off. <laughs> let's get real crazy and, and kind of play into the, the fact that everything is going to kind of tie together. What, what if, you know, what if these Sith guys are kind of working with Kylo, but Palpatine may drop another Order 66 command to wipe or, out or the, something like that? Yeah. I mean, all these, again, we're, we're just, we're riffing on Trevor's shot at this point. <laughs> but that's why it's so fucking fantastic. Nick and I are literally getting our, our speculation game on, on a toy photography shot, just based on the way it was staged and the thoughtfulness uh, based really on what we think we know about this movie up until this point. Yeah, I mean it's a it's an overall it's an absolutely beautiful composition and he's and a fucking creation. pro. I mean the the guy's a pro. It's why he gets paid to do this. I mean this is pretty much what he does. He's a he's a designer. He gets paid to make people shit look awesome. Yeah, and make it look awesome. He does on a fucking yeah. daily basis. Job so. well done. It, it, this shot honestly has more than likely convinced me. I need the goddamn one six scale Sith trooper. Now <laughs> I, I mean, go. I don't own any troopers that, that tall. I mean, I, I do have that Kylo and he is nice, but man, I, I just, I love this trooper. The, the more and more I see him, the more shots coming out. Shit. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful figure and I can't, like I, I know we've seen a lot of Sith Trooper shots, especially from the big guys out there from Work More or Less, from Black Series, One Six, Swift Picks, like the the usual suspects from you know Sir Dork, like they they're out there, and I like the, it just looks so cool because it it's something that's familiar. Like you look at the figure, you look at the design, and you know like this is a First Order Trooper, it's a Storm Trooper, but that red just makes it so different. And it makes it pop so much that, like, I may throw a Sith Trooper in every top five from now on just because it looks so good, regardless. Yeah, he's badass. And I don't want to say it out loud because I'm a shithead and I want to secure my own, but Hasbro has already put out the dates, at least for the Black <laughs> Series version of the Sith Trooper, where they're going to sell it on Hasbro, was it Hasbro Shop. Let's just say it's early September. If you know the game, you know what I'm talking about. Matt's got emails the, are going out today, my friend. Matt's got the hookup. Everybody needs to remember. That. There's no, there's no hookup. <laughs> this is just if you know what you're doing and you've been signing up for the right notices, you probably got some emails this week about a a tip off of when the Black Series Sith Trooper, the Black Series Old School Boba Fett, are going to go up on the Hasbro shop. So let's just say it's early September. Early September. Nice, nice. So yeah, maybe like nine, 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 ten, something like that. Listen out there. You didn't people. hear it from me, <laughs> and if I don't fucking get any, because you assholes remembered this, shame on you. <laughs> if you're you gonna better go fucking there, buy your two, yeah, buy your two limit and make sure to send one to me or Nick. Yeah, I was gonna say, go out there and, and get your get two, and then send one to the Star Wars Time Boys just right. to make Thank sure you. that that Thank we're you. we're in the loop. Thank you. So next up. Going down to number four here. This is, there's a guy out there by the name of Phase Runner. 
phase. Oh, this guy's a pimp. Yeah. And, and he's on he's on our radar, and we're on his now because yeah. I, I just you, you're probably gonna have to loop in his next one <laughs> into the next top five because. He, he cooked up another oh, one. Oh, yeah. I mean, so what FaZe Runner does, FaZe underscore Runner on, on Instagram, is he makes concept posters for, I mean, for basically anything. Like, he's made ones for the Joker. He's made one for Mr. Robot, Batman. But his most recent foray into the concept posters has been The Rise of Skywalker, and he's got three out there so far. Um, we have his second one up there and his second one is just, it's mind bending the way that he was able to put together this composition, the way that his mind works to really, to, to develop things like this. And what we see is, is a poster of, of Kylo Ren on the ground and the, the Falcon flying in towards him. And he is ripping the Falcon in half with the Force. Yeah, think think Force Unleashed, like that little boss fight where he's kind of tearing down a Star Destroyer. But this case, it's it's Ben, and in his old school Kylo kind of shaggy robes, no helmet, longer hair, luscious hair. It, it, as Nick said, the, the the Falcon's coming in, and the dude is literally just fucking tearing it down the middle. Like it's a pizza pie and he's just ripping it down the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and and can, can anyone else can anyone else even think what their brain would do if you saw this play out on the big screen this December? I mean, <laughs> I mean, what a, you want to talk about everyone calling Kylo a pussy and do something. Show me. There you go. Fucking do that. Take out the Falcon with your bare ass hands. Yeah. I mean, one that would make a point. It would just like. I know, like, I, I know in my brain that we're likely never going to see the Falcon again on the big screen. Like, Tross is it. That's, you're never going to see it again. But in my heart, I'm like, you, you can't, even if we never see it again, even if it's done, you, you, oh, you can't don't want destroy it. Nick's, Nick's it. Sentimental. You can't destroy the Falcon. Like, you, it doesn't matter who's behind the cockpit. It doesn't matter who's flying it. It doesn't matter who's ownership of the ship it is you cannot destroy the millennium falcon like it's it's it is a piece of even if they do it like phase runner wants them to do it. i mean it would I mean, that's a glorious death <laughs> you want to talk about a glorious death that's a i mean it, 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 the falcon would even get a better death than Han. yeah and i mean i mean that is a fucking glorious death vikings would pay for that death i mean that i mean just shit. look at this thing i want a t-shirt I, yeah, I mean, again, it phase if uh, like you probably can't sell these because it's you know Star Wars licenses and all this other stuff. But like if if you start slinging these poster size to people, <laughs> you <laughs> like they're crap. You got to give me some of that phase runner shit. Like, give me some of that. Oh yeah, oh, it's good. I mean, my walls are a little bare in this room right now, and I would gladly hang this up full poster size to be the first thing hang you know hung on my wall. But like. This would, I mean, this is if you're gonna destroy the Falcon, this is the way you have to do it. Like, you can't give it some bitch death. Like, yeah, oh, that, that's just, mostly my my point is like, yeah, if you're gonna do it, let's do it like this. Because uh, as I said, I mean, th- it's glory. It, it's it's Romans. It's it's Spartans. I mean, it, it's the warrior culture. It, it, I mean, the Falcon would would definitely get in the Valhalla if it went out like that. Oh yeah, and it's just. I could see it happening too. That's the thing is I can see this happening, and based off of the like the the functionality and the and the design of the Falcon, the way that he's ripping it, it would perfectly allow for the people in the cockpit to survive, you know, because it'll crash. The cockpit's on the left hand side of the image, and it would probably be if we think about the opening to the Tross trailer and what we expect that Ray is going to do to Kylo's tie, inter- uh, tie interceptor, like, or tie silencer, this would just be get back. He's like, you destroyed my ship. Well, now I'm going to destroy yours. Like, but it just, yeah, they're so kind of into that. Like they're, they're, they're definitely a tit for tat, excuse me, type of uh, relationship. Those two. So, uh, either way, I mean, obviously you can probably tell why I initially shared this shot. I mean, it just, it fucking jumps jumps off the screen i mean this is it's boss level art here and it it really 
it just it just screams at you ultimate unlimited power right i mean this is everything palpatine ever envisioned for people that embrace the dark side is to take the hero ship probably with the heroes on it and fucking rip it in half yeah with your hands (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's i love it it's just uh, it's beautiful it's beautiful so last up last one on the top five here we have from three lessie and what I like about this shot is that this character has has come to be known as the silent hero of Star Wars recently. So if you watch A New Hope, see the opening, you get to the scene where Uncle Owen's out there. He's picking out his droids, he picks out an R4 unit, R4 unit rolls out. Boom, motivator pops. And because that motivator pops, he picks up R2-D2. R2-D2 links up with Luke Skywalker. He's back reunited with C-3PO, and our hero's journey begins. And so he's an R4. He's an R5. R5, it was R5-D4. Yeah. R5-D4. R4 is uh, Obi-Wan's. R4 is from, Obi-Wan's. He's the one calling the old folks home, yeah, or whatever yeah. the fuck Obi R4. says in <laughs> Attack of the Clones. Care of the old folks home. Yeah. I, it's, right? That's the Jedi Didn't we talk about this before, yeah. where, where we're trying to figure out what the fuck he says? Yeah, he says, care, like, he says care of the old folks home, which I assume yes. means the Jedi Council Chambers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, it's like, th- that again, that just shows you, like, what, what were we doing in the prequels? Yeah. Like, is that supposed to be funny? I mean, he said it serious, but like it's it was some like, code word. Nobody gets it. Like, no, he says right. that, and nobody's like, what does that mean? Like, and he says it, so he's in the middle of a fucking storm. It, it, right, he, that's what I mean. He says it seriously. Yeah, like, he's outside on Camino, just says it, and I don't know if that's, like, a specific, like you said, is that a specific code that's punched in R4 that, like, he know like, that it transmits to the Jedi Council Chambers, or is it just, like, Obi-Wan bullshit and, like, Send it to the old folks' home where fucking Yoda and Mace and all those. That's fine. Are. But, but either way, back to <laughs> three shot here. Yeah. Um, it's just first and foremost, the, the, the subtle weathering he put on R5 is ridiculous. Uh, it, 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 and just the way it's pulled in, like the perspective here, I mean, it looks like a movie still. I mean, he looks life size, the Jawas look life size. But I think what Nick was getting at initially is just kind of the, the, the props used here in the comment. Uh, basically, don't use that bad motivator, <laughs> and it's two Jawas working on R5 before they hit up the, the, the Lars family homestead. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's just a really cool shot. It's a very poignant shot. It's a, it's a character that is oftentimes just dismissed or forgotten. But I, and, you're right. You set him up exactly right. I mean, without him... None of the four, five, and six probably don't play out the way we think they do. Oh yeah, and it's again, again with this shot, you see characters that you don't often see. I mean, you see Jawas, which we rarely see in toy photography, or at least you know don't often make it into the top fives or in some of our shares. So like using Jawas, making sure that their eyes are lit properly, which is a key component to that that species of character, and then bringing in the R five unit making it look, like you said, weathered, like it was in the movie. I, I would really like to know if Three, like, went and watched, like, Three Lessie went and watched, you know, A New Hope and, you know, it's, noticed it's some detailed. of the weathering I mean, this is This is a lot more precise weathering than what I usually <laughs> do, which is either catch my shit on fire with random fireworks <laughs> or smoke stains, or sometimes I just dip them in shoe polish and wipe it off like a caveman and just say it looks good. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 a fantastically composed shot. And, and Nick, did you ever sit there and just be like, George is such a genius? I mean, back then when robotics and this that they they weren't nearly what they are now. But the fact that a droid broke down because of a bad motivator. Yeah, like right, <laughs> like he's not motivated. That's how I, like, I, I yeah. mean from the youngest of ages. I, that's how I've always thought about. It. I was like, 
Well, how convenient is that? He broke down because his motivator was bad. He's just it makes like, sense. He didn't want to work anymore. He's not motivated. <laughs> yeah. He's done. He just didn't. He wasn't motivated to do it. And, and you know, fucking Goldenrod wasn't sticking up for his buddy. I mean, it wasn't until he broke down. He's like, oh, yeah, you could you could bring R2. Dude, it, like, R2 sitting there going like, dude, my, you're my, you're like my dad, essentially, or, or my brother or my gay lover, <laughs> and you're just leaving me here? It's hilarious because, like, yeah, like, 3PO was literally walking off. and like He was out. He's like, fuck <laughs> off. Whatever. And then R2 starts to walk out. He's like, hey. Hey, wait for me. And then they fucking come in and they shut him down. Yeah, they zap his ass. <laughs> <laughs> C-3PO is such a dick. He is. He was literally moments away from just being like, fuck this little droid that I've known for 20 years at this point. Oh, he... What do you mean moments away? He he said fuck this little droid. It, it, that's, again, back to your point. If it wasn't for R5 not being motivated, that that's... The, the partnership gets split right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, we... And then... Like, how does Luke end up linking up with Obi? Because R2 is the one who finds Obi-Wan. Like, there's a lot. The the entire Star and we've talked about this before, the entire Star Wars saga from episodes one through six hinged completely and entirely on R2-D2. Pretty much. Like, if if he... And you can even make the argument that the new ones do, too, because without him, you don't find Luke. So, there you go. I mean... (laughs) R2 is the fucking hero of the Skywalker saga. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's fucking... And he's not even a Skywalker. No. He's a fucking Amidala. Yeah, he's just some random-ass Galactic Republic droid who's... Yeah, Naboo asshole that was on the Queen's ship that just so happened to get popped by a turbo laser from the Trade Federation. Yeah. I mean, it's... Love that guy. Yeah, so that's our top five for this... For 7, 26 through 8, 2. Now, like Matt said, we're doing a mega cast here, so it's going to be a two-part. Yeah, don't worry. We got a whole second part coming up to this with brand new topics in addition to a next set of uh, badass Star Wars fan art in the form of either traditional or toy photography. So thanks for tuning in, my friends. It was great to be back talking with Nick, all things Star Wars. I know I was kind of shot out of can at first. Things might have been a little wonky as we got back into our groove. But as usual, Nick and I fucking nailed it. I give us a 10 out of 10, as should you all, right? It's that time of the cast where we got to go through now what you got to do for us. And that is take your happy asses over to StarWarsTime.net. Hit the subscribe to podcast at the top. Hit the hamburger icon if you're on mobile and find the same link. And that's how you can find the show on all podcasting platforms that matter. If you can't find yours there, guess what? You can take our RS feed and jam it into whatever dumbass free open source podcast app of your choosing. And while you're there on StarWarsTime.net, don't forget to hit up our YouTube channel where we do post the podcast for those of you that like to stare at equalizers. But in all seriousness, we do also add the imagery we talk about, especially when we're talking about new toy releases and, in particular, the Star Wars art segment. All right, my friends. It's not going to be long before you can hear us again because we're rocking part two next. So make sure to tune into the next episode of the Star Wars Time Show. In between now and then, though, may that force be with you always. (laughs) 